Hey, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Picklet here once again. And I'm Mickey Mouse here. And we are back for some more of the Maxi Toys. And welcome back to my play of Super Smash Bros. Melee for the Nintendo GameCube. So, last time that we actually accomplished with um, Nest in Classic Mode, even though despite the fact that we actually lost about two um, stocks roughly. So, even then, though, we did that as a pretty solid run. So today for this episode is that we're not going into adventure mode just yet though, because today we're about to be tackling through a third mode in the single player department, which was All-Star mode, the new introduction mode in the Super Smash Bros. history. Conquer all enemies using limited uh, recovery items. So um, the order to actually unlock this mode is by basically unlock all 25 of those fighters. So even then though, that we've already unlocked them from the get-go, as far as we actually did manage just trying to you know, start this last play up. So, um, anyway. So, uh, we're gonna be setting our difficulty to easy mode, because the reason why we set this on easy mode is because we'll explain more to that as soon as we actually jump into it. So, um, anyway. So, you remember how we actually be still on the progression on classic mode, even though we are actually done 10 characters, but the only remainings are Captain Falcon and Jigglypuff. But even then, uh, that'll be up until next um, couple of days or so. And then, as far as the adventure mode is concerned, that we uh, actually got three more characters left to showcase, which are Mewtwo, Mr. Game & Watch, and Moth. However, in All-Star modes, respectively, we're going to be tackling through, you know, these little um, six characters hit, um, are showcased in the, um, the far side of the character selection screen, more likely, um, Dr. Mario, Falco, Pichu, Roy, and Galandor from Young Link. These are basically clone characters um, spots because they are, even though when it clone when it comes to clone characters and stuff, that means um, they actually share the exact same amount of movements. Like take for instance, today we're about to be tackling through Dr. Mario in All Star mode. So let's just talk about um, Dr. Mario for a moment. Uh, basically, Dr. Mario, he plays exactly like Mario, because all he does, he, they ha he has the exact same moves as Mario. But a noticeable difference is between Mario, though, be compared to the regular Mario, is the fact that Dr. Mario is actually a lot stronger compared to Mario. At least before I've heard about it, anyway. And as a result of that, the uh, smash attacks are really overpowered when it comes to actually when you're trying to perform itself correctly, so... Yeah, as you can probably tell from that little part right there, so... Yeah, so... Originally, that's, um, the Super Smash Bros. community might actually think they actually let Doctor, or in this case, Mario, can actually get himself a Doctor, um, costume. But it turns out it was actually a separate character instead. Which also does the same thing as it does it for Super Smash Bros. 4 for the Nintendo 3DS and Nintendo Wii U. So, um, anyway. Alright, so the next opponent we face up against is Donkey Kong, and every time when we actually go to anticipate for battles is that they actually get us some different costume or different colors. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting to see so much of that. So, this is how All-Star mode actually worked out in Super Smash Bros. Melee, especially Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and even Super Smash Bros. 4 anyway. Um, basically you start off with just one opponent from the get-go from the match, and then, um, basically, that after you actually beat your opponent in the, um, during the All-Star mode, and then that way you can actually have yourselves a rest area, which, if you're very familiar with, uh, this music has been playing, that theme was actually a remixed, um, theme from, the uh, whenever you go to the saving point of Great Cave Offensive, in, for example, Kirby's Fun Pack, and especially, um, Kirby Superstar Ultra, um, for the Nintendo DS, for as a file selection screen, um, that, this, um, theme plays exactly like how it does it for the saving point in, um, Kirby Superstar or Kirby's Fun Pack, whenever you get to the, um, the saving system from, um, the Great Cave Offensive, and I believe there's also one for Milky Bar, um, I can't remember exactly what the final, um, minigame they're actually gonna unlock with. But anyway, though, so, now we face off with um, Princess um, Peach, but in the form of Daisy's color. But even then, though, that, yeah. So, um, when it comes to um, unlocking him, because this is actually the next unlockable character you might actually be very familiar with, because even though we already talked about Luigi from um, Classic Mode, in order to actually unlock Dr. Mario, it was actually pretty simple. You basically have to either deal with uh, classic mode, or even adventure mode as just Mario, because if you pick any other characters, uh, we'll explain more to those types of situations as soon as we actually get into that, so anyway. 
For the first few rounds, you mainly have to like do a one-on-one. -on -one. And then every time when you actually move on to the progression of those um, other versus matches, mainly Link and Luigi, in this case Team Blue, um, that way you can actually just anticipate to actually deal with two opponents. So yeah, very interesting, there's so much for that. And then later on you can actually face off against with those three opponents. Now unlike in Super Smash Bros. Brawl and even Super Smash Bros. 4 or what have you, um, some of these opponents were actually stuck in with just in one match, even then though, once you deal with one opponent, then the other player will come in, so... Yeah, there's a little bit of a difference when it comes to that, when it comes to future installments, so anyway. And then among the way, with the All-Star mode anyway, is that you actually have yourselves three, um, heart containers, which actually comes in handy for you if you actually have your higher percentage meter go up. And basically, I highly suggest you actually use it wisely, I have to say, because if you use it all, you probably ended up losing the matches anyway, so that's the only thing that needs to be accepted for that. And yeah, you can actually see these little bunch of trophies in the background right there. Even though, strangely enough though, they're only 2D rendered, which I think is mainly due to the fact that because of how, uh, I don't know what the, I was going to be saying for that part, so uh, anyway. So yeah, for Dr. Mario, when it comes to unlockable method, it was actually pretty simple, self-explanatory, if you actually kind of think about it. And uh, one thing we haven't mentioned about the on the stage uh, locations, whenever you're trying to unlock those characters, uh, if you're about to unlock Luigi, you were able to actually fight him in Mushroom Kingdom 2. So, as for Dr. Mario, however, you have to fight him in Princess Peach's Castle once you actually finish either Classic Mode or Adventure Mode as Mario. So again, that makes it more likely to deal for it, so... And it looks like we have, once again, Team Blue, so even though it's very similar to how it does it for, uh, Blink and even Luigi as a result. So if you probably don't know already, this is actually the third attempt for this recording session because the recent solution for this is because, um... There was one little uh, major factor about the um, All-Star mode when it comes to difficulty. Originally, we are going to do this on normal mode, but unfortunately though, this is actually by far one of the most toughest modes you can actually come across when you have to do normal mode on. Because um, no matter how many times we're actually just trying to progressively each of the um, All-Star mode itself, Sometimes we actually get butt kicked by enemies, oh, not, not, not enemies, uh, these too many opponents on screen, not to mention these too many bob arms, or even explosions for that have you, just constantly screw us up. So um, even then, uh, that's probably, this is the reason why we decided to actually stick with easy mode, unlike normal difficulties on classic mode, and even adventure mode for that matter. Okay, so now we move on into a new type of stage, which was actually called Pokey Floats. Pokey Floats is actually a pretty interesting level, because not to mention you're actually going to be taking place out of the skies, but also you are actually just to have a, some set of uh, interactions with those bunch of Pokemons as a part of platforms. So yeah, it's very interesting to say what- WHAT?! ARE YOU KIDDING ME?! Oh, God, I really hate the how the Bob Arms actually just to kill ourselves. Now, unlike in Adventure Mode and Classic Mode, you only have like one stock in order to proceed. However though, when it comes to the Continue System, if you're probably familiar with this at this point, um, unlike Classic Mode and Adventure Mode, if you actually be using Continue, you just have to use 3 coins. In All-Star Mode, however, you have to use 10 coins. Which attempts to the uh, trying to waste all of your coins, but, uh, but at least uh, the, the, the fact is, is because of how uh, difficult this mode can be. Especially in normal difficulties case. So even then though, that's we probably gonna have to just to be keep up with it, so anyway. Now as far as the final match is concerned, the final opponents is always have to be Mr. Game & Watch, because obviously, Mr. Game & Watch will have to be the final unlockable character you're actually going to unlock in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Unlike in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, which is the final character you'll be unlocking is Wolf. And the 3DS version's uh, final character you do unlock is that is Jigglypuff. And then the Wii U version of Smash 4's final um, unlockable character will have to be Duck Hunt Duo. Or Duck Hunt, if you actually just prefer a coin that in North America. So, anyway though. So as far as All-Star mode is concerned, this mode is actually quite unique and interesting. Because for one, um... You can actually just to actually, oh yeah, you can use the uh, pan your camera zooming and as far as you can see the character details on that, which is a little bit of a thing I must confess. 
I actually found this music to be quite relaxing and cheerful to listen to. At least I find anyway. So here we have the uh, Captain Falcon, including the clone character uh, Ganondorf, and even Pikachu. So let's go ahead and deal with those heavyweight characters, especially the Pikachu, which I believe Pikachu is a lightweight character, so I'm presuming that's where this is going. And this one actually takes place in Mute City, so... Yeah, as far as when we actually get into the uh, other unlockable characters we're about to be showcase, uh, we'll probably discuss that as soon as we actually play as them, so... At least they remember that, again, we got uh, Captain Falcon to deal with, and especially Jigglypuff in the Classic Mode department, and then that will be it for Classic Mode, so even then, though, we got two characters left. Even three characters left for um, Adventure Mode. So even then, though, it's up to, like, six six characters at the moment, because even though we're doing Dr. Mario at the moment, but even then though, as soon as we're actually done with Dr. Mario, then we can actually move on to Falco, Ganondorf, Young Link, Pichu, and Roy. So yeah, that'll be pretty situational. What's weird about, what's really weird about this is that if you actually just to zoom your camera in, um, if you ever, when you come towards, occasionally, it'll just drop some, um, occasional trophies on the left side of the, um, the all-star rest area. Um, sometimes it's kind of randomized, and as a result, if you turn your camera around by using the C-Stick, because even then, though, this game doesn't have quick, um, smash attacks when we get to Brawl, and even Smash 4. But even then, though, you can actually see the question mark that has been show, um, shown, via the, based off of the trophies themselves. So yeah, that was about it when it comes to All-Star mode, and the fact is, is that, unfortunately though, we actually used just only one continue on something like that. And speaking of continues and size, you probably know something is a little bit different when it comes to trophy design. Um, you know how in the classic mode you get like a traditional, um, design from the, cl um, the character's perspective lay? And then, um, the Adventure Mode's trophies will actually represent the melee uh, models of the characters themselves. And the All-Star Mode version is actually a ulti ultimate costumes for those, um, characters on um, trophies. Like, for instance, Dr. Mario got himself his blue overalls, including the, um, the, um, he actually, um, uses his, um, capsule. Or in this case, the, um, the pills. So anyway. So yeah, I think that's all I can say about Dr. Mario, honestly, because he's more like plays exactly similar to Mario's. Like, he's got, um, as far as the, um, although we haven't mentioned about the movesets and what have you, but even then, we'll talk more into that as soon as we actually get into, before we actually end this episode off, is that, as usual, we're going to be saying, um, seeing the Break the Targets level for Dr. Mario, and even for the All-Star characters themselves. So uh, yeah, we're far as worth mentioning. So, as far as the um, the clone characters are concerned for um, target test levels, these are by far the hardest target test for me because sometimes that target uh, targets themselves they are pretty well hidden, and other times they are really hard to obtain to actually hear from. So yeah, that's one thing I must confess. So yeah, back into Dr. Mario's moveset, uh, B is a standalone, uh, B standalone attack, which can actually allow Dr. Mario to shoot out the, not fireballs, but just, um, pills themselves, in this case, um, capsules. And also, the up B attack is a pretty much a typical standpoint, is that you get actually do, like, a, a jump pose attack, which is very similar to Mario's. And what's weird about this is that it doesn't actually affect it on the coin effect. And also, Mario, Dr. Mario can perform a Dr. Mario Tornado, which is self-explanatory. And then Dr. Mario, um, it, as far as the down B attack for Dr. Mario Tornado, if you perform that correctly. And then the side B attack is, is very much identical to um, Cape from uh, Mario, except it's now usually calls it Dr. Sheet, which is acts out very similar to the Cape from Mario. So that's far as this one deliver this correctly. But again, that the only noticeable differences I find for Dr. Mario compared to regular Mario is the fact that I think Dr. Mario is actually a lot more stronger compared to Mario as far as the attacks is concerned. Which, as far as I remember the Riley, I think that's what this is. As far as the, uh, the all-star length is concerned, um, unfortunately though, that unlike classic mode and invention mode, you get something rewarding if you actually just anticipated for um, higher difficulties in even normal mode as a result. Like, in Classic Mario, you do have the ability to actually just to fight against with Master Hand and Crazy Hand at the same time. And then in Adventure Mode, you can have the ability to actually just all get a chance to actually f battle against with Giga Bowser at the end. Sadly, in All-Star Mode, that's not the case here. So yeah, it just practically stays the same. 
So anyway, so we're going to have to end things off here. So next time, we'll let's play Super Smash Bros. Melee. We're about to return back into classic mode and do the last two characters in this run, which was Captain Falcon and Jigglypuff, and that will be it for classic mode in Super Smash Bros. Melee. So yeah, see you guys then. Later, fellas.